we are given 1.00 gram piece of phosphorus. We are also given a flask of 2.60 times 10 to the power of 23 molecules of oxygen gas. The number of moles okay, in phosphorus. So we have the mass of phosphorus, right? We use the pyramid, right? Molar mass, mass, number of moles. So we're trying to find this. So we're given that and we can calculate that. So we've got 1.00 grams divided by the molar mass, which is 123.9 grams per mole. Grams cancel out, and I'm left with, and I have to put mine in scientific notation, 8.07 times 10 to the power of negative 3 moles. If you use all the zeros, that's fine. Okay, you, just, you can simplify it for yourself if you, if you wish. Um, if not, don't worry about it. So, we have this many moles of, uh, of phosphorus. Now, we want to find the number of moles okay, of oxygen. We know that we have 2.60 times 10 to the power of 23 molecules. We know that one mole of oxygen has how many molecules? 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. Right? So we're going to divide this by 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 molecules per mole. Molecules cancel out, and I'm left with 0 0.432 moles of oxygen. Okay. So I have that. Now, we have the number of moles of my reactants. So what we're going to do is, my unknown is going to be one of my products. But we only have one product. So we just list that. Right? We put that. So we create our list. We have moles and molecules. So, first one we're going to put in here is my unknown, P4O10. We don't have, know how many moles, but how many molecules in this balance equation? One. Okay. Now, the next thing we have is the phosphorus. And how many moles do we have of that? Well, we calculated that. 0 0.07 times 10 power of negative 3 moles. And we have how many molecules in the equation? Only one. Okay. And the last one, okay, we have is oxygen. How many moles of oxygen? 0 0.432 moles. And how many molecules do we have? Five. Okay. So just like we did okay, in the regular stoichiometry when we we're trying to figure out, we want to figure out which one of these two reactants is going to make more product. Right? So what we're going to do is we're going to find the ratio between these two and then we're going to find the ratio of the oxygen to the tetraphosphorus decaoxide. Okay, so take a minute and find the number of moles that are created of our product. Let's find out our uh, mole ratio okay, when we're trying to figure out the number of phosphorus oxide to just the phosphorus. So we have X moles of uh, tetraphosphorus decoxide okay, over 8.07 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of 
of phosphorus. We have one molecule of the uh, tetraphosphorus decaoxide over one molecule of the phosphorus. So we just transfer that over, okay, cross multiply, and we have x is equal to, well, because we have one over one, it's just equal to 8.07 times 10 to the power of negative 3 moles of P4O10. Okay, so now let's find out the amount of oxygen. Okay, when we're using that many moles of oxygen, how much, uh, how many moles of the uh, tetraphosphorus decoxide are we going to produce? Okay, so we have again x moles of tetraphosphorus decoxide over 0.432 moles of oxygen equals. Well, we have one molecule over five molecules. So we're going to cross that over, and we're left with 0.432 times one over five molecules. So when we multiply those two together, 8.64 times 10 to the power of negative two moles. I put this in scientific notation. I put it in scientific notation. Now, which one is the bigger number? The oxygen. The oxygen or the, uh, the oxygen is the bigger number. The oxygen is the bigger number. So, which one is the limiting reactant? The phosphorus is the limiting reactant. So now it says, what mass of P4O10 is actually produced? The atom. Right? Well, what do you do now? Which one of the moles are we going to use? Right? Because now we're producing this many moles, we're producing this many moles, or this many moles, okay? So we know that the phosphorus is the limiting, okay? Phosphorus is the limiting, but the question didn't ask us for that. But we do need to know that, okay? We do need to know that because we've got, which mole are we going to use? The phosphorus. The one of? Phosphorus, because when that runs out, it's done, right? When that one's done, okay, it runs out, it's done. So we're going to use that, okay? So we have that many moles, right? We have that many moles. So what are we going to do to find the mass? What do we need to find? The molar mass. Molar mass of? The tetraphosphorus decoxide. Take a moment. We know we're using this amount here, the 8.07, right? Because that's the one that we produce the least amount. So that is the number of moles, okay? The least number of moles we can produce with these two reactants. Now, we've got the number of moles. We need to find the molar mass of the P4O10. What's the molar mass? 2.29. That's why I got No, molar mass. Oh. 283.9. 0.9. Okay. And it's grams per mole. So what relationship do we have according to our... We're multiplying. So we're going to take this number here, the number of moles, the lower of the two moles, and we're going to multiply it by the molar mass of our product, and we're going to get 2.29 grams of tetraphosphorus decoxide. 